Good morning, brand DIYers, and a happy new year to all of you. Um, I, oh, I just lost the light there. Um, I hope that all of you had a fantastic uh, winter break and had a peaceful, restful, and most important, safe uh, transition into 2021. I'm very excited to start the year. This is the first brand DIY live stream of the year, and I want to start with some terrific news. Uh, the goal last year, we started about halfway through last year, and the goal was to get plus 500 members by Christmas time. And we hit and we surpassed that goal. And I wanna say thank you all for joining up with Brand DIY and sticking with Brand DIY. And we are up, I believe at last count, around 504 to 510 members of the Brand DIY group. It's a cool tribe and it is growing, growing, growing. So thank you very, very much for being part of this movement. Um, I have other cool news over the Christmas break. I was working with my friends on expanding the Brand DIY offering and that is almost complete now. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but uh, we are putting together a whole new offering, exciting offering. I will drop one hint, there's a conference involved. So uh, stay tuned for that. We should be rolling that out in the next week or two. Uh, so it is a new year. And for all of you new members, I, I just want to sort of lay out what Brand DIY is. And for those of you who are, aren't new members, maybe just a refresher. Brand DIY was started based on a book that I wrote called Brand DIY which is a summary of all the processes and procedures that I use whenever I am building a brand for a client, whether that client is a multinational huge brand like McDonald's or Budweiser or a scrappy startup just coming out of the garage. The process is always the same. And if you want to check it out, go to branddiy.com and check out the book that started it all. We put this group together, my friends Chris Burge and Chris Whiteley and I, because a lot of people were downloading the book and they said, why don't we create something for these people to share where they can all go and swap advice? And that's what branddiygroup.com became. It is, in the words of my frequent guest and friend, Brad Kahn, an advice network, a place where people go to swap advice and share learnings about building their brand. The mission of branddiygroup.com and Brand DIY is to help entrepreneurs take control of their brand. Because let's face it, nobody understands your brand better than you do and the people that you come in contact with every day. Not me, not any other high price specialist, you understand the brand better. And I believe that it's a sin that you don't take control of your brand and guide it. And that's what Brand DIY Group is all about. Helping you take control of your brand and guide your own brand and have a sense of that controlled destiny that you know what your brand is becoming. So what do we wanna talk about today? I thought it would be appropriate to start a series on the fundamentals of brand building. All the stuff that we thought we knew about brands and brand building, but might have forgotten or might not really know that well. I wanna start with a clean slate and together with you, go through the process of building a brand and understanding a brand right from scratch. So today, I wanna to talk about what a brand is and more important, what a brand is not. So let's start with what it's not. First of all, a brand is not a logo. In fact, even a logo isn't a logo because most of us understand a logo to be a symbol like the Nike swoosh, right? Logo is actually Greek for word and it's short for logo type, which is design speak for a custom lettered word. Now, logo sounds really cool, but what most people are actually referring to when they say logo is a thing called a trademark, a symbol, a monogram, an emblem. If you're confused about all that and you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about this for, I'm just gonna stop right here. But the important thing is, 
a logo or any other trademark is not the brand. All right, you still tracking with me? All right, let's jump into let's jump one layer deeper. Second, a brand is also not a corporate identity system. Now, any of you who have worked with larger companies have probably come in contact with a corporate ID system. Uh, I've created plenty of them myself. I call them brand Bibles. And what they are is a long document that maps out not only what a brand is and what a brand isn't and how a brand talks and how a brand doesn't talk and what the brand story is and the type of customer the brand appeals to, but they also map out the graphic standards and the graphic identity and all the visual elements that represent a company so that when you do a publication, an ad, when you do stationery, when you wrap a car in your logo or a trademark, when you put a poster on the side of the on the side of the highway, when you do ads on social media, when you do banners, when you do remarketing, that there is a consistency there that builds up the person's impression of who you are and what you stand for. That is a corporate identity system and it's not the brand. A brand is not a product. Now, here is something funny because uh, in all my years of working as a creative director and a writer in big, big ad agencies, we always talked about brand managers. It's actually a position. Inside of corporations, a brand manager is a real thing. Now, marketing people and brand managers often talk about how they're managing their brand. However, most of the time, they're not managing their brand. What they're managing is their product where that product sits on the shelf, what the product looks like, what it feels like, what it smells like when you open the bottle, the quality of the product itself. It's all very, very tangible stuff. You can look and feel and touch it. Managing a brand is not nearly as tangible. Finally, a brand and this is gonna come as a big shock to a lot of folks, a brand is not what you or I say it is. You may own that product. You may manage that product in your day-to-day -day life, but no matter how much you try, you can't implant the one thing that a brand is in the hearts and minds of your customers. And that one thing is a feeling. Now you can get part of the way there with colors and corporate ID systems and trademarks and snappy logos on sides of cars and uh, remarketing stuff that follows people around the internet. You can get part of the way there. However, I'd say you can get halfway at best. So now I've told you all these things that a brand is not. And that leaves us with the logical sort of question. So what is a brand? A brand, as I just said, is a gut feeling. And the most important person to have that gut feeling when it comes to a brand is the person who will buy that brand. That is your customer. We are all of us, all of us emotional, intuitive beings who work primarily on an unspoken sort of a gut feeling level, despite our best efforts to be rational. So when you hear somebody, for example, say a B2C brand, business to consumer, is different from a B2B brand, business to business, because a B2B buyer is a professional buyer and therefore they are rational. That is bullshit. A B2B buyer is, at the end of the day, a human being, last time I checked anyway, and they are, despite all their best efforts, just as irrational, just as intuitive, just as emotional as the rest of us, and therefore they are influenced by a gut feeling just like the rest of us. Now, what's important here is that what we're talking about is not a company that is buying. We're not talking about a market 
that is buying. We're not talking about the general public that's buying. We're talking about one person. Now I've gone on in 2020 again and again and again about how important it is to do interviews when you do research to find out from people what they think the brand is. And a lot of you people push back and say, well, I put opinion polls out there. It's not the same thing. You need to stare somebody in the face, see the whites of their eyes and figure out what one individual feels or try to pull it out of them, what they feel about what your product represents to them, the gut feeling they have. You can't do it with sort of omnibus studies and mass opinion polls. So what does all of this mean to you? All the brand DIYers, 504 of us, all here together, what does this mean to you as a person who wants to take control of their brand and manage their brand themselves? It means that you have a very important and most important, a never ending job to do. It's up to you to take the product or service that you're promoting and give it a uniqueness that can't be replicated, thereby giving it a feeling in your customer's heart that they can't forget. A lot of you have heard of the idea of a platonic ideal. It comes from Plato. And what Plato said was that we all have ideal forms in our head that we share as a society. So for example, when I say horse, all of us have generally the same picture in our head. That is a flowing mane, long neck, that sound, galloping, long body, big tail. All of us kind of share that. However, is your brand a sea biscuit? Because there's only one sea biscuit. A man of war? A secretariat? Is it one of those unforgettable horses that there's only one of in the world and that everybody knows? Or is your horse just one in the herd, one of the many, a totally forgettable horse. That is the difference between building a product and building a brand. Now the job for us at Brand DIY, we are an advice network. That is all of us helping all of us create a sea biscuit or a man of war or a secretariat for every single one of us. Create brands that are unique so that when people see them and experience them, they get a unique gut feeling in their tummy and they don't forget that feeling. That is our job here at Brand DIY. Now, over the coming weeks, we are going to be doing just that. We are going to be building a foundation and some of the basic tools I'm going to be talking about that we can all use to help build our horse into a sea biscuit or a man of war or a secretariat and make it unforgettable. Now, just a bit of housekeeping for those of you who are new, and I know there's a lot of you who are new, and for those of you who may have forgotten, we have a live stream every single weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific right here at branddiygroup.com. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have the short snippets, little bits of advice that will set you off on your day and go, huh, maybe I can use that today. On Tuesdays, we bring in an expert, just as we have an expert tomorrow on the show. And on Thursdays, we have one of you, one of the entrepreneurs or people who belong to the Brand DIY group, come on and share their experience. So that's how it works here. And then what we ask you to do is to start sharing and asking questions and putting it out there so that folks around you can help you build that unique gut feeling into your product or service and take control of your brand. So there you go. If you know anybody who could use this, please send them to branddiygroup.com 
And I am looking forward to a bright and shiny 2021 with all of you. And life is good. I hope you have a terrific Monday and a terrific start to the new year.